blessed be God, the almighty God, the unchallengeable God, the inapproachable light, God who loves us, that he comes down to our level. God, as wonderful as he is, is willing to live in us. For the person who loves God, who keeps his commandment, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit dwell in that person. The wonderful God. Blessed be his name forever is in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to read Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12 to verse 14. Isaiah 40, 12 to 14. Who has measured the water in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance, who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has taught him, with whom did he take counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of justice, who taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding. Questions and questions and questions. We have to look at the things. You know when you wake up to think that you know more than God and you know what sh should happen? Most times that we pray, we're making a mess of things. Lord, do this one, do this one, do it this way. Do it. Who told you that you know anything to the extent that you have to instruct God what to do and how to do it? You tell God you must do it this way. It gets so funny when somebody is looking for favor. Lord, my uncle has money. Convince him to give me the money. I am going to him this morning. Lord, talk to him. Woo! Did the Lord tell you that he wants your uncle to give you money? <laughs> you know some of the things we say when we think we are praying. Lord, touch his heart. The heart of the king is in the hands of God. Lord, touch his heart. Touch his heart. Make him respond to me positively. Whoa! Or sometimes somebody has done something that you don't like. Lord, kill him. Destroy him. You know what you have done? You have judged the fellow simply because the fellow has done something that is what you don't like or even harmful to you. But you judge the person, condemn him, and then proceed to tell God to, to execute your judgment and condemnation. And what's your judgment? Kill him. You hear it in so-called Christian prayers. Kill, kill, kill. Die, die, die. Destroy, destroy. Fire, fire, fire. You know, all those kinds of things. Where were you when God was doing everything that you find in this world? And anyway, as we read in that passage, justice. What do you know about justice? What do you know about the judgment of God? What do you know is justice in a particular situation? That fellow has done that thing. Yes, harmful. And from your perspective, he's wrong. From his perspective, he is right. And from your perspective, you are right. From his own perspective, you are wrong. So, who brings justice? You? It has to be God. Yielding to God in all. Realizing that you don't know anything about this world. You don't know why there is an earthquake. You don't know why there is a tsunami. You know what? We leave this business of after the fact. Uh, well, sometimes you hear that there are movements in the air. There may be an earthquake. There may not be. And almost always, every so often, earthquakes take the world by surprise. Not to talk of tsunamis. The only ones we seem to know are wind storms that are already building up and you know the direction is coming and most times they don't come in that direction. And almost always they never come in the intensity that is expected. Sometimes we're expecting some wild, wild, and it comes so low. And sometimes it's, what we expect is something moderate and it arrives and oh, the devastation is unbearable. It just shows what? We are not capable of challenging God. Don't try to challenge God. Don't play God on your head. God is God. Did you instruct him to create a mountain? Can all 
the signs of this world create a mountain that is enduring? Can all the signs of this world create an ocean anywhere in this world? Okay, go to the middle of China, dig out every place and create an ocean and see if it will stand. They have enough landmass. Or India, or wherever else. We create swimming pools and make so much noise about them. There are too many things we don't have control over. Can you force the clouds to come together? Or can you force the sun to shine on any day? Or bring out a situation that makes the sun stop shining? Can you do that? What indeed can we do? In the end, what do you find? We cannot challenge God. Submit to God. You know what this passage is saying? When you see the magnitude of what God does, that man can never ever come to doing, submit to that God. Don't sit down and pretend there is no God. There is. And don't sit down and tell yourself you know what to do. You don't. Submit to God. Humble yourself in the hands of the almighty God and he will lift you up. He will make your life prosperous. He will make your life successful. Whoever submits to God is going to find fruitfulness and joy in his life. If you are that person, continue. God will continually give you joy, fruitfulness, and peace all the days you live in this world. And you will fulfill your days. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.